it is, uh, to my mind, a kind of searing and also extraordinary, ambitious way of telling the story not just of one man, although centrally one man, but, as I said earlier, truly some of the most significant and uh, defining events of the 20th century. I certainly felt it kind of growing up in the 80s. There was the, the threat of nuclear annihilation was, was always somewhere in the back of my mind. The, the journey from a kind of innocence in, at the beginning of the century to 1945 and the events uh, towards the end of the play is an enormous journey that defines us morally as well as scientifically and politically. I think there are not many moments in the history of the world where we say before and after. Yes. And this is one of the most profound ones. What you bring out very well, Tom, in the play is the excitement of these kids. They've got something... They've gone into science because they're excited by wanting to know nature. You get to a point where he's, you know, at the top of the mountain, there's room for only two feet, where Oppenheimer's running these other scientists who are his competitors. Only Oppenheimer had the insight that this was an industrial project that he was taking on board. It was something qualitatively but, but different. What happens is that you, you have this incredible PR disaster for science. It's, it, it comes back to the idea of the players, do you believe that what is um, possible is inevitable? Yes, you quite rightly don't land on a moral conclusion, but you do land on an emotional conclusion in the play. It's a journey from idealism to cynicism. It's a very good question. I said about halfway through rehearsals, I thought it was a play about leadership. What I've written is not a documentary. It is uh, the, the retelling of that myth. Because I felt that you were uh, burdened with a responsibility almost too heavy for a human being.